Hello, and welcome to Cutting Edge Health. Uh, today, we're talking about migraine relief without medications and how treating migraine with a new type of technology could be revolutionary and considerably different than previous. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum, uh, founder of Cutting Edge Health, which focuses on being able to help people understand how to improve their health for both their brain as well as their body using science-based treatment options in order to be able to provide treatments that don't rely upon medications or invasive surgery. Today, we're talking about TMS and migraine treatment, and we're gonna define what those things are. But first, we need to take a step back. I think most people believe they know what a migraine happens to be, but they clearly uh, need more information about exactly what that might be, um, because a migraine is not equivalent to a headache, and a headache is not equivalent to a migraine. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly a migraine is. So migraine is a common and disabling neurologic condition. It has similarities to headaches, uh, but it traditionally revolves around a different sensitivity of the brain more so than not. What you see is that it's present in about 1 billion people worldwide and is present in about one out of four homes. The element of migraines is it can be genetic. If one parent has a migraine, about 50% of children uh, are having one, can have one too. In addition, if both par parents have a migraine, 75% chance of the child having a migraine as well. So let's talk a little bit about potential risk factors for migraine. So some risk factors include the following. They include stressful life events, head injury, so things like traumatic brain injury, excessive caffeine use, overuse of opioids, not having uh, an optimized acute treatment plan, uh, persistent frequent nauseousness and snoring and sleep apnea can lead to it. And some associated things that happen with migraines can be other pain conditions, depression and anxiety, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But kind of fleshing out a migraine understanding a little bit more so, you hear sometimes a reference to something that's called a prodrome, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. So a prodrome is that element that sort of starts everything before it really kind of gets into the full um, context of feeling it, right? So you can have a light sensitivity, meaning bright lights set off a headache, sound sensitivity, you can still have a nauseousness, tiredness, uh, things along those lines. And then you can have something that's called an aura, which results in kind of uh, different changes in vision where you see spots and stars, sometimes a numbness and tingling. And then that's when the headache really kind of starts. And what you see is that there is throbbing pain traditionally on one side of the head, but sometimes both sides of the head. It's worse with movement. It can have nauseousness and vomiting that's associated with it. And then after it started to resolve, you can have some lightheadedness and some fatigue. So most people would say, well, you can be able to treat it with medications. Well, historically, it's had difficulty with being able to be treated with medications. So uh, things like traditional triptans have been an issue. Um, however, over the last few years, there have been things like calcitonin gene-related uh, protein antagonists, which have been phenomenal for pain relief, but it hasn't worked for everybody. And the expense, as well as some other things, can be a bit problematic. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But when you talk about taking medications, half of the people who have migraine medications don't take it as the doctor has recommended. And preventative medic medicines need to be taken daily. So you have to really kind of have a whole plan about how you utilize it. As alluded to before, there are things like CGRP antagonists, which are like the following. And so you have different ones, and these are their fancy names that were approved since 2018. And the main reason for this slide is that basically it shows the route of administration. Traditionally, it's not a pill form. It's something like an injection. So you can have a sub-Q, subcutaneous, IV, or injections that really are the utilization of how you can be able to provide CGRPs. In addition, um, migraines are known to be associated with other conditions. So things like depression, or 40% who have migraines also have associated depression. And people with migraine are twice as likely to consider suicide than those people without. More, in addition, more than 66% of people with bipolar disorder also have migraine. And anxiety is present in half of people with migraine that's, that's prevalent. So now we come to this 
discussion about TMS and how does this fit into the role of being able to provide value? So TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. So exactly what the heck is that? So TMS itself is you use magnetic pulses to ease traditionally depression, but there are a lot of other indications for that. If you're interested in that, check out some of our other videos that explain treatments from everything from mood disorders to being able to improve different pain type conditions. So normally TMS is applied to the surface of the head where there's a non-invasive stimulation using magnetic pulses to stimulate brain cells. And those brain cells are stimulated because the magnetic energy is focused at specific areas that trigger neurons to have electrical charges and cause neurons to become active. You would think for headaches that may not necessarily be a good thing. And historically, even meeting many medical providers thought that was the case. So how is TMS different now? Well, what we've seen is that there have been a number of studies that have really been looking at TMS modified in a different manner. One of those studies is the following, is the efficacy of transcranial magnetic stimulation on migraine, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So for those of you who follow our channel pretty aggressively, what you'll see is that a meta-analysis is a pool of multiple different research articles to say, is this treatment better or is it not really of that much value? And as you could probably guess from me doing this video, what they have found is as of late, is that those people who thought TMS wasn't of value to migraines were wrong. And so there's actually in this study where you can see where they break it out and you can see the look of how they compare the sham group to those that actually had TMS. You can see the subsequent studies, but there was a more simple, simpler, simplified viewpoint that looked at this in a different way. So they, it was a study, as mentioned, done by those individuals where you had um, an evaluation specifically for treatment resistant migraine, which occurs in about 45 to 75 to 75 to 77 percent of people taking medications for pain relief. Right. Um, and those types of medications, not the CGRP, but other medicines haven't always been all that helpful or successful. And what they did is they took 61 patients that had this really difficult to treat migraine that wasn't responding to medications. They evaluated them with a certain type of test that's called the MIDAS test, which stands for Migraine Disability Assessment Test. And they'd looked at it both before and after. And for this particular study that we're referencing in regards to this, it was a study that only used a single session of repetitive TMS lasting just for 10 minutes. To give you context, when TMS is used for depression, you will frequently use 30 plus sessions in order to be able to get a response. And sometimes you won't see a response until maybe at the earliest, the 16th session. For migraines, they were being treated with one, one treatment session of about, give or take, 10 to 15 minutes or so, which is pretty remarkable that they would get a response like that. And what they were able to see is the following is 21% of people had a decrease in symptoms, no matter how intense it was, from it going from severe disability to moderate or mild. Only 3% didn't see any degree of improvement. The treatment was tolerated, there was no side effects, and 84% said they would definitely go about using this again for an acute bout of migraine. So how does this look when we look at it graphically? It looks at it in the following way. So what you see is that Basically, TMS used for treatment resistant uh, migraines is that only 3% didn't respond, which leaves you with 97% of people that had some degree of improvement. 29% were straight out responders with no degree of challenges. 68% of people responded, but had some other uh, recurrence afterwards, but were able to come back for treatment if they felt so inclined. So in conclusion, TMS is a rapid, safe, non-invasive, different than what is taking place with some of our CGRP type treatment options that has an evidence base that's being shown from meta-analysis that is an alternative for migraine sufferer, sufferers who are not tolerating traditional treatment or who want a more natural option than changing what's going on with their body. So for those of you who follow our channel and you found this information helpful, please hit the like button. For those of you, 
for those of you who have no idea who the heck we are, please subscribe so you can find more videos that can be able to help you figure out how to be able to punch pain in the face and get back to leading the life that you deserve, whether it's a headache, back pain, depression, anxiety, anything that can be evaluated and assessed and treated with pure and true science to be able to give a good response and get you back to doing the things that you deserve and want to be able to do. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum. Look forward to talking with you again. If you have questions or comments about, do you suffer from migraines? Have CGRP uh, antagonists been helpful for you? Have you had challenges with medications before? Please leave them in the comment section, section below if you're watching this video at a later date. Thank you so much and have a great day.